There's been a huge amount of reform in the NHS, again coming into force in April 2013, which is a huge seismic change in the way that the NHS is structured and organised. The building block for the NHS starts with clinical commissioning groups now, which are replacing primary care trusts. They're the groups who are responsible for meeting the needs of local people. And they have a specific duty now under Section 3 of the NHS Act 2006 to provide the services that are reasonably required by their community, which will include disabled children. Importantly, they've also got a duty, which is imposed by the NHS Constitution, to assess the health needs of their local area and make sure that those needs are being met. So parent forums can use the Constitution to say to the local CCGs, you need to assess the health needs of disabled children and then put in place services to make sure that those needs are being met. So the CCGs will be the, the local commissioning organisations. Also at a local area you'll have the local health and wellbeing board and this is a partnership between the CCG and the local authority and it looks to me like those, are, those boards are going to have some very important powers in terms of commissioning and planning services. They're responsible for the joint strategic needs assessment which sets out what the priorities are around health and social care in the area. And so parent forums are definitely going to want to be influencing uh, the Health and Wellbeing Board in their local area. At a national level, we've now got the NHS Commissioning Board, which, as I understand it, is being called NHS England. And that's the, the arm's length body that is going to be responsible for making sure that the NHS works properly across the country. And it will also have some commissioning responsibilities for high cost, low incidence services, which will include some of the services that disabled children need. The Secretary of State has produced a mandate for um, NHS England, for the Commissioning Board, and told the Board what the priorities have to be until May 2015, which is when we expect the, the next general election to be. And it, very helpfully, disabled children are clearly one of the priority areas in the mandate where NHS England is told to focus its, its efforts. And one of the commitments is that children, disabled children will get all the health services they need in their plan which we presume is a reference to the Education, Health and Care Plan, which, which should be enforced by then. So it's very helpful to see that disabled children have been made a national priority for NHS England. It's then up to local parent forums to make sure that they're a local priority, because the whole point of the, the reforms is that local areas should be setting priorities to meet local need, and parent forums have to make sure that disabled children are high up the agenda with each of the CCGs in their area, and there may be more than one, and with the Health and Wellbeing Board that, that sits across the local authority and the CCG. So these are, these are challenging times because any big upheaval in, in an organisation like the NHS is going to be challenging. But there is a real opportunity here, I think, for parent forums to push disabled children up the agenda locally and, and push disabled children's health needs up towards the top of the, the local agenda. Forums have quite a few legal tools to use in terms of persuading health bodies to be responsive to the needs of disabled children. There is now a specific duty on clinical commissioning groups, on CCGs, to provide the health services that are reasonably required by their local community. That's in Section 3 of the NHS Act 2006, as amended by the, the recent Health Act. So that's the, the starting point. There's also very important duties to cooperate on the NHS and local authorities, which we have already in Section 10 of the Children Act 2004, for example. So lo there shouldn't be uh, any legal reason why health and local authorities should be apart at the moment. We don't need the new bill to, to bring them together in legal terms, although no doubt a, a focus in the bill on cooperation is welcome in practical terms. And the other big area is around involvement, and um, Section 82 of the NHS Act requires health bodies to engage with patients and representative groups when they're planning and commissioning services. So there's a legal duty on CCGs and other health bodies to involve parent forums and others in terms of planning and commissioning of health services locally. So engagement and cooperation duties are already there, should be being respected, and there's now a, a very important duty to provide under Section 3 of the 2006 Act, uh, which falls directly onto the clinical commissioning groups. So plenty of legal tools that I hope parent forums can use to try and improve health services for disabled children.